Kate Floss too. Welcome to Creative Whim Studio. Hey guys, it's been a hot minute. My apologies. It's been so crazy here. <laughs> crazy busy. Just trying to get ready for me to work at Expo. Trying not to work too much so that I am spending as much time as possible with Mom and Jerry. And, you know, working with Patreon. It just, there's just all the things. <laughs> But it is a full life and a fun life, and I'm very grateful for all of the things going on in my life right now. But anyways, um, my mom and Jerry are moving back to Michigan. I could not be happier. I am so thrilled because, I mean, for the obvious reason, just to be able to spend more time with them, but also to, uh, you know, be able to be more involved in my mom's, you know, um, health and I am you know, to help Jerry out taking her to appointments and things like that and just just hanging out with them and seeing them every single week you know it'll just be amazing so they are in the process of looking for a place here so yay let's celebrate that moment <laughs> gosh what else we have mom and I well last week Jerry was out of town he ended up going to Illinois to his cousins because his cousin's wife passed away unexpectedly and so he went down there for the funeral and mom and I had I appoint well she had an eye appointment and her and I went and got our hair caught and then Monday yesterday I was pretty much gone to appointments all day Kevin and I had eye appointments and then Athena had an appointment with a new vet so Athena has this mole which we thought was just, you know, she's going to be eight the end of August. So as dogs age, they tend to get a little lumpy and bumpy, kind of like we do, right? We get, we get age spots, they get age spots. So we just assumed it was that. So I don't know, this was probably six weeks ago or, or maybe even two months ago. Kevin took her, I was out of town, and Kevin took her to the vet appointment just to have this mole looked at because it, it was, it was black and it, it got bigger around you know in circumference so they measured it and they said come back in three weeks and let's measure it again and just monitor it so within three weeks it went from this round thing to like being raised I would say probably at almost a quarter of an inch I mean it, it grew fast in three weeks so they went she went back and they did this like it wasn't a biopsy I don't know they took some cells and they sent it out and we're supposed to find out like the following week. Well, they didn't hear the following week. So the, the week after that, we were supposed to find out. I called them and I said, what is happening? I haven't heard. Well, the lab had technical difficulties and could not get the information out to the vets. Anyways, turns out it's melanoma, but they don't know if it's benign or malignant. Well, I thought melanoma was always meant cancer, but I, I don't know. Maybe it's different in dogs. I'm probably just wrong. <laughs> anyway, um, so they don't do surgeries at where we normally take our dog to the vet. They don't do surgeries there because the doctor, she doesn't have steady hands anymore and she's in the process of trying to hire a surgical, you know, a surgical staff. So in the interim, I had to find a new vet and she gave me references. Well, the first two that I, she gave me three references. The first two I called, they, it was going to be like two months before I could get Teeny in. And I'm like, I'm not waiting that long. The last one, thank God, I called and they could get her in right away for an appointment. And then just to assess her and do some blood work. And then her, she scheduled, so I took her to that yesterday, that appointment. So she's scheduled for surgery on August 8th. So if you could please say prayers for my sweet little Teeny Woo. She's like a child to me. <laughs> 
I know a lot of you are the same way. Your pets are your family. I love and adore her. I spend every single day with her. I'm super sad to leave town when I can't take her with me. <laughs> so I just, she has to be okay. That's all I have to say. So I've been dealing with all of that. And I'm working still on the Halloween book for Needlework Expo. Needlework Expo is the last weekend of August. And I have been fully finishing things. I have been staging and photographing, you know, the fully finished pieces and working as much as possible on it. I'm waiting for two more pieces for that book, which will be coming hopefully by Friday, she said. So I gotta fully finish those and stage and photograph those. And then I have two pieces that will be in that book that will just be computer generated images because there is no time left to get them stitched or for me to stitch them. So that's that. I was gonna do a fall book. So it's gonna be Hello Halloween, that book. There's gonna be 11 designs in it. Six are from 2020 and 2021 Patreon designs, but there'll be five that are brand new that no one has seen yet. Well, in Patreon, I've given sneak peeks, but that's what Patreon's for. So I planned on doing a Hello Autumn book, but there's no time. I have not been able to work enough to get that one done. So that will be a needlework or a um, Nashville release come March which is a bummer because this is the time of year it would be really great for that. So I'll have the Hello Halloween book. I will have uh, three more Christmas star-shaped ornaments. I will have two other individual Halloween designs. One of them I sneak peeked already on Instagram, Tabby's Halloween. And then I will have... Oh, yeah, in our home, which was the Silver Needle Retreat exclusive in July of 2021. Well, I'm going to be releasing that for Needlework Expo. I think that's it. There was one Santa that is out being stitched, but I asked if it was going to be back by a certain date, and I never heard back from him, so I don't, I'm not counting on that one. But if it did happen to show up in time, I would love to release that one because it's so cool. Anyway, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> that's been my life. Oh, we celebrated Easton's third birthday at our house this past Saturday. We had a house full of people. Actually, we were mostly outside. It was it was pretty hot, but not horribly hot. This week has been is beautiful like 76 and just nice and breezy and mild and sunny no humidity the humidity can make a huge difference so we're enjoying that weather tonight kevin is playing at the clio amphitheater which is about a 15 minute drive from here so i plan on going to that it's the plan i might be a little late but he starts at seven and he, so he's been crazy busy with his gigs. He has a gig Thursday in Monroe, Michigan. And then Saturday he has a gig. And then I'm gone this weekend. I am going on a girl's trip for one of my best friend's daughter's bachelorette party. We're going to Mackinac Island. And then we're spending the day there Saturday. And then staying the night in Mackinac City. And then coming home on Sunday. So that'll be so nice to just just relax and not think about work <laughs> and being so far behind in what I need to do. But I have found time to stitch. I stitch in the morning. I haven't stitched the last, I didn't stitch Sunday, I didn't stitch Monday, today's Tuesday and I didn't stitch today, today either. But it's been a little while since my last floss tube. To be honest, I'm not even sure if it's been two weeks or three weeks since my last floss tube. I think it's been three weeks. So in the, those three weeks, I have gotten some things done. Showing some progress. I do have a fully finished piece as well, and then I have some hauls. So I think as far as, like, I don't have really any, any announcements. I haven't really planned when I'm going to do my new release video for the Needlework Expo, Expo because I don't even have the book done and I don't even have the pieces all ready. So, and I need to go down to Craft Gallery and pick up the Halloween sampler that Paula has framed for me. But, so 
So the original plan was my mom and Jerry were coming for two weeks because he didn't want to be gone more than three weeks. So they were going to be here for two weeks. And with him being gone last week and now they're trying to find a place to live down here and he also their cars in getting worked on there's just all these things going on that they can't leave they're <laughs> kind of stuck here for a while trying to get all these things settled and whatnot so they're going to be here probably more like a month to five weeks so um I haven't, you know, went down to Craft Gallery to pick up the Halloween sampler because I didn't want to leave while they were here, but it's going to have to happen because they're staying, you know, two to three weeks longer than they had planned, and I got to get that. So what I did for the Halloween book is I just photoshopped a frame on it for the book, but I want to have the physical piece here to show you guys for my new release video. So anyways, if you live near Craft Gallery, go see it live. There's live that sounds weird but seeing things in person as you know makes a huge difference and that one is spectacular and I'm not patting myself or bragging patting myself on the back or bragging I'm really not but Kathy's stitching Kathy Lounsbury stitched it she did an amazing job and it's just so vintage Halloween looking and the fabric was the perfect choice which is always so hard for me my most difficult part of designing is pulling the floss and laying it on the different, you know, fabric choices and making that right decision because it can make or break a design and it makes me so flippin' nervous. <laughs> like when I'm stitching something myself, that's why I wish I could stitch all my own models. There's no way I could ever do that. Um, and I do, and I trust, I'm getting to where I, you know, I have very... Uh, seasoned stitchers that if something didn't look right you know they usually let me know this color is not showing up and so that has given me some major comfort but it's still the fabric choice still freaks me out but anyway okay moving on let's go into my whips and what I've been working on I have a new start I don't know why I started this I bought this pattern last year just I love it and I'm really in the Halloween mood because I'm working on the Halloween book and I had to design Halloween for the August Patreon charts so I just got all of that done so I'm really in the fall thinking mode and I have this chart that I bought last year I was gonna start it last year and I never did so I decided why not start it now why not you know I only have a million things going on but this is so cute. This is Stacy Nash Primitives. It is her Jack o' Lantern Sewing Pocket in Chatelaine. Super cute. I love it. I think it was a new release last year. Does it say? I bought it last year. I don't know that it was new last year. I don't see a date on the cover. Uh, I'm using charcoal. Is that what the called for is? Yeah, the car, the called for floss is charcoal weak dye works, which is what I'm using. The called for linen was 36 count weak dye works linen Havana, but I switched it out for R&R um, &R vintage beeswax. And this is all I have done. I'm just getting started on it, but I really like it on this fabric. A very teeny tiny start but oh yeah oh yeah and something interesting the J I don't even know if you can tell okay I don't know if you can tell but that J I'm trying so hard to hold this still and I'm not very good at it there we go okay I don't know if you could see that but the J is a Oh, it's a specialty stitch. I don't remember what it was called, so I'd have to look it up. I want to say four-sided stitch, but that doesn't sound right. Da, 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 da. Jeez, Alou, Teresa. Get it together. I'm sorry, it's an Algerian eyelet stitch. Well, I don't... Th so, on the design, 
all the I don't think all of the words but like Jack the J on Jack the O and then the L on Lantern um, the F on Fright the H on Halloween the N on Night you know so it's like the beginning of a lot of the words the moon and the cat they're all Algerian eyelet stitches and I don't think I'm going to worry about it because I can't I can't see the difference now if you were stitching this now this is 40 count and she has her stitched on no this is 36 count no it's not <laughs> I'm so sorry this piece of fabric is 36 inches by 27 inches I saw that 36 anyway I'm sorry this is 40 count now maybe if you were stitching this on a a larger count like 36 or 32 maybe those Algerian eyelet stitches would show up more that's what I'm guessing I've never done any specialty stitches at all but having said that since they don't look any different than the regular cross stitch I'm not gonna do all those eyelet stitches because it takes a lot more time and I I don't see the difference so there you go Maybe you guys can put in the comments if you've ever done the Algerian eyelet stitch and if maybe I'm correct in my thinking that if you do it on, you know, 28, 30, 35, 36 count, maybe they show up more. I don't know. The air conditioner is so ridiculously loud. All right. The next piece I made some progress on is a Patreon July chart green coat Santa this was for tier two three and four so if you have watched floss toss with Sue and Rachel Rachel is stitching this no Sue is stitching this one and Rachel is stitching uh, right jolly old elf but they're both patreon members and those are the July patreon charts now August 1st is when I upload the new it's gonna be Halloween oh, I designed three Halloween pieces that I want to stitch all of them myself I love them so much oh, I just wish I had more time to stitch all these things but anyway watch floss toss, toss they have made really good progress on their Santas so I this is what I have done so far I was off the last time I showed you guys this I was off on his beard on this side so I did have to frog it I filled in all of his beard and then I started on the star so there'll be a tree here and I started on the star so I didn't get a ton done but I fixed an error and I'm moving on to a different part of the piece okay now I made progress on something that I have not worked on in a while this piece is Lindy stitches Lindy stitches Raven's needle book I love it so much and I'm I'm not sure if I'm going to make it into the needle book I'm thinking I might if I can find two frames teeny tiny enough I would really like to frame them and then have one on top of the other on a wall I think that would be so cute but you never know I like needle books too but I don't I have needle books I don't know that I need more of them how many needle books does one person need right they are cool though so I don't know all right, here is my progress. I need to put this on a board so you can see it better. All right, it's been a while since I worked on this, so you might not remember where I left off last time. So I will tell you as soon as I can get this thing to, why is it not hanging on? These unruly crows, I tell you. I mean ravens. Here is the 
details on this one. I finished the bird. I had like, I think I was about here on him. So I filled in all the bottom part of this bird. And then I came over here and I did the two spools, which I use long stitches on the spools. I think it makes it look like thread that way. And then I started on another raven. So this one is so so much fun to stitch and look at look at these birds this guy's my favorite i love him i love this design but i think it would be so cute to just have this one framed and then this one framed and hanging above one another we'll see i mean this was a kit so i have everything to finish it as a needlebook so that's that's pretty makes it way more enticing to make it as a needle book because I already have all the pieces. We shall see. Okay, last but not least, in Patreon Tier 4, we are doing a mystery sale called Strawberry Manor. <coughs> Excuse me. Strawberry Manor. Yep, or doodle. So when I went to the eye doctor, I took this with me because I was hoping that they could help me to be able to see my stitching without magnification and lighting. I mean, you need good lighting anyway, but I have to have magnification unless I'm stitching. I mean, I probably could stitch on Ada. I don't even know about 32 count. I don't know. But I didn't know if, you know, contacts would be better for me. But basically they said no, that... The best thing, the contacts will never be as good as glasses, is what they told me. So I was kind of bummed about that, but it is what it is. All right, so re I released part two of the Strawberry Manor cell on July 15th. So July 15th, uh, we, we ended part one here, and then this is July, the July part. August 15th, I will release part three, which will be basically here. And then part four is a teeny tiny part. I don't know. I'm thinking about releasing part three and part four at the same time because part four is super tiny. And then I'll just watch everyone's progress in the Facebook group and see how they're doing. Because when it comes to September 15th, I might not release one in September because September 15th would be part four. But if I'm going to release it in August, if everybody's caught up and waiting for the next part, then I can come down here and release this in September. So I don't know. We'll just see. But that's my progress. I love stitching this. This is a really fun design to stitch. I'm loving it. So what I have to do yet before August 15th is I have to do the alphabet here and the, um, the border part right there. And then I'm caught up. And I'm ready to go, which that's super, super easy. Alphabets, man, I really like that. Stitching words or stitching alphabet is fun, and it goes super quick. And those strawberries went really quick, too. Well, that's all I have for whips, guys. Give me a second to put this back in the pouch. That's what's so hard about not doing floss tube every week because when you miss a week, I can't remember what I said and what I showed and I get confused. But anyway, I don't know if I showed this or not. Dot Dot Goose Designs. I got my strawberry bag that I ordered from her and that's where I'm housing my strawberry manor sale. Love it. Okay, I fully finished. I fully finished something, you guys. If you remember my last floss tube, I I think I finished stitching this piece, Hands to Work, Hearts to Love. And I said hopefully I'll have it fully finished for the next video, which I succeeded in. This is a little dustpan. I don't know if it's a child's dustpan. I've heard before, I heard someone say it one time that these were kept by the fireplace. So if some ashes got on the hearth, you know, they could sweep it up into this little pan. I don't know. Either way, I love it. 
and it fit this piece perfectly. And then I used Lady Dot Creates uh, mini pom pom to go around this piece. I have a major boo boo. <laughs> you know, it just ticks me off so bad because I counted, I counted two or three times to make sure when I came in here and started this tree, I would be in the right position. I knew that this hand was in the wrong position. That's why I didn't count from the hand, which would have been a lot easier. I counted from this corner and I went over. I counted it like two, at least two times, maybe even three. And I'm stitching away and stitching away. Well, if I would have put this extra row on, it would have been butted, butted up against that urn and that flower. So, as you can see, that tree is more narrow than the other one because I couldn't put the extras, the stitches. There should be another row here and another row here on the outside of that tree. But whatever, whatever. People keep telling me that the Amish say that the Amish always put a mistake in their needlework because only God is perfect. Well, you know, I have other mistakes in there. So I didn't need to make that mistake. It's like... I don't think any of my pieces that I have stitched has have been perfect anyways. But whatever. It's still cute. I love it. I love it. I wasn't about to frog it. I'm not into frogging. If it was like, if I looked at that and that's all my eyes saw, and if it was something I couldn't fudge or something like that, I would definitely pull it out. But I think it looks fine. Oh, I see I got a little bit of hot glue there. Oh, it's so cute. I really think it's adorable. Super happy with the way it turned out. So yeah, look for these when you're out antiquing. They just, it's perfect. The color is perfect. The size was perfect. I just love it. All right, moving on to haul. Like the day after I recorded my last one, I got this from 805 Stitcher. Hold on. So Tara is a great bag maker. And look, the Grinch. You guys, I love the Grinch. I love the Grinch. I love the cartoon version. I love the Jim Carrey version. And then the last one that came out, not my favorite. It's probably like my least favorite out of the three, but I will watch it every year anyways at Christmas time. But this is just so cute. And then she was so sweet. She sent me a Grinch needle minder as well. So thank you so much, Tara. Love, love, love it. Then I was in the strawberry mode because of the Strawberry Manor sale. And I wanted to buy some strawberries to keep in a dough bowl. I ordered a dough bowl. I didn't have one, which is insane because I have admired them for the longest time. And I don't have like a farmhouse table in my house. I wish I did. But my house, I'd love to add on like a dining room, like living room, dining room area off the side of the house. I don't have a dining room. I have what I call a breakfast nook. It's like I have a table in there, a round table, and it's cramped when you're, everyone's sitting around the table. And it's like, really, people, the person that built this house, did you not think about like having people over for dinner? <laughs> so aggravating. So anyway, I don't have a farmhouse table, so I, I always wanted a big dough bowl, but I'm like, well, where am I going to put it? So I found one, super cute. I should have brought it down here because it's part of my haul, but it's up at the house. It's about this, about this big. It's so cute. So I wanted some strawberries to go in it. So I went to Under the Woolen Willow and Michelle, as you know, sends these amazing paper clips with the woolen penny on it. I just absolutely love it. I have seen Brenda and Laura show these all the time. I have never ordered from Under the Woolen Willow. I don't know why. I don't know why what is wrong with me but I went to Etsy and I just put in strawberries no I didn't put in just strawberries what did I put in 
I don't know, I put something in, strawberry related, and a bunch of stuff come up. And so I saw these. Now, I ordered this one. Isn't it adorable? Look at it. It's chenille. Or no. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the bedspreads. Chenille bedspreads? Oh my gosh, I am losing it here. Look how adorable that is. Those bumps make it really look like a strawberry. And it's got an actual twig for the stem. Well, she is such a doll that she sent me one in every color. Look. A cream color one, a pinkish color one, and then a real pink color one. Like that one's not ripe or something. You know what I mean? It's so cool though. Focus. Look how cute. So I'm excited now that I've shown them, I can take them up to the house. Because I've been making strawberry desserts like crazy. We're not a big dessert family. I don't make desserts normally. But when I my mom and Jerry are here and just having company, a lot of times you'll make desserts. So I've made I have made a banana cream pie that was for Jerry's birthday. That's his favorite. He was telling us how his grandma used to make him one for his birthday every year. And um like he did he never had birthday parties. Like he had a really difficult childhood, but he had a grandma that loved to cook and she'd cook everything without recipes and just cook from scratch and everything. And so she knew he liked those. So for his birthday, she'd make him that pie. Anyway, I said, well, I can't promise you it will taste anything near as good as your grandma's pie, but I'm willing to try. So for his birthday it was a few weeks ago, I made him a banana cream pie and it was really, really good. It was so good. I've made that. I made a strawberry. What did I make? Oh God, I made something. I can't remember what it was called. I don't remember the title of the recipe, but it was a pain in the took us to make. And I said to my mom, well, I hope you all like this. If you like it, enjoy it because I'm never making it again. And if you don't like it, that's fine because I'm still never making it again. But <laughs> anyway, everyone liked it. It was really good. And then last weekend or no yeah sunday i made a strawberry pie just kind of off the cuff because i made i had a pie crust left over when i made that pie for jerry the pie crust came with two and i only needed one so i baked that and then i looked up a recipe for like a cream cheese dessert layer so I, it was basically cream cheese sugar some milk I think that's it. Mix that. Oh, and Cool Whip. Mix that up, and that was another layer. And then I used strawberry glaze on top of that. And then I cut up fresh strawberries and blueberries and just loaded the top of it. And we had that last night. Oh, it was so good. So I'm like big time into the strawberries right now in Patreon. People turned in strawberry recipes, and I made a PDF booklet that everybody could, um, you know, use to make strawberry things for this summer. So... I haven't tried any of those yet, though. I plan on doing that as well. Okay, moving on. So then I found another uh, shop that had strawberries. This is, what is the name of the shop? Right here. Sweet Memories Vintage. Her, uh, oh, she has two Etsy shops. I didn't know that. The one I went to was Quenby mountain love anyway her name is pamela here is her information so i don't have to link it below if you're interested in these amazing strawberries please just look up now and here is her information so it's etsy.com slash shop slash uh quen mountain love or quenby anyway that was the shop that i ordered from and here are the strawberries and this is gonna be really hard to show you but look at how cool these are so I love her uh, fabric choices. They're kind of prim colors. I love the polka dot. I love the ticking. This one's cool. It kind of looks like strawberry seeds. My favorite one, though, is this burgundy ticking. And look at it. It's got felt for the leaves. And then the stem is twine. 
so cute so these came from that shop really love these so those will look great i love that they're a different size than those other strawberries it looks so cute in that bowl all right i was so excited to get my quarterly shipment from uh, lfa linens it's called millstone it's a i got the 40 count fat quarter and this is the july linen club so she also, so this is uh, Sue and Rachel of Floss Toss. Sue is uh, Legacy Fiber Arts and Knit 24. And then Rachel is Treehouse Fiber Arts. And they are an amazing team on Floss Tube as well as an amazing team. Uh, Sue is a yarn dyer. That's how she started. But now she's dyeing linen and Ada. So I joined their their linen club because, hello, why would you not? And then she gave us this amazing roasted chestnut um, classic color works floss, which is perfect for autumn. Isn't it beautiful? It's so pretty. And then she always does uh, research. Rachel loves, you know, history and researching things and um she does such an amazing job let me get this linen out so you can see it though so this is millstone look oh that color is looking pretty good it's actually a little bit darker than what that's showing there we go look you guys look at that modeling i mean sue just started doing the dyeing and she has nailed it she has nailed it and from my understanding I'm not 100% sure of this, but I'm, I, I think I asked Rachel if they, the things in their club will eventually be part of their line, and she said yes. So who knows, you know, when they're so busy. They're so busy with the club and then having a hard time getting the 40 count. So when is 40 count linen just going to be easy to find again? I, <laughs> you know, I feel so bad for the dyers because... I mean, I have a lot of 40 count linen that I have, you know, because I'm a designer, so I need to have a lot of linen on hand. I need to have choices. I have been collecting it for a long time and, you know, from diff a lot of different dyers so that I have a lot of choices. And I want to spread the love. You know, the, I love all these fabric dyers and they work so hard for us and we, all of us, aren't we just so grateful to have so many choices? So we, I want to support every one of them. And so I, you know, try to have things stitched, models stitched on different linens from different people as best as I can. Okay, then the amazing Fox and Rabbit, <laughs> Karen and Brendan, they sent me some pieces of their 40 count and they also sent me this let me grab this oh, I, i'm so thrilled beyond thrilled to have this i wish all fabric dyers did this but they sent me on cards every single one of their amazing linens look at these colors you guys i mean hello beautiful 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 so yeah, this is, oh, look at this color. Look at that sampler color. That is amazing. That's eucalyptus. But anyway, I'm so thrilled to have this color card. But what they did send me, ha! Ah, 40 count ballet slippers. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to try to get you the best color possible. And then uh, 40 count hog bristle. So I'll hold them up together so you can see the difference. Oh, 40 count flannel flower. Look at the difference. Oh my gosh, this reminds me of Bramble. A little bit. Salt bush. Okay, I don't think I told you guys what I was stitching my stuff on when I showed you. That green coated Santa I showed you with white beard and I just started on the star next to him that's on 46 count salt bush and I love this gray color in salt bush it is fabulous 
Look at these colors. So beautiful. And then um, up in the attic, a little bit more pinkish color. I should have it in front. A little bit more of a pinkish color in there, but oh my gosh, how beautiful. For a sampler, that would be so pretty. And last but not least, a uh, 40 count paper bark. This one here, this light one on the end. That's paper bark. But look at those colors. Ah! So I'm so happy to have my hot little hands on more fox and rabbit. Because I, I just ordered some not that long ago. I think it was actually my last floss tube that I showed you in my haul that I had ordered from Hollis Hands Creates. Um, some fox and rabbit but I didn't have big chunks like I couldn't have done a sampler on any of those because they weren't that big but I can do samplers on these and I oh, I love designing samplers and that's what I'm doing for September patreon I am I am uh, designing because it's a sampler September so September 1st if you belong to my patreon uh, tier two will get one sampler, tier three will get two samplers, and tier four will get. Wait a minute. Tier. That's confusing. <laughs> tier two will get one sampler, tier three will get two samplers, and tier four will get three samplers. Ooh, that's hard to say. Anyways, um, I'm going to start designing them right away because samplers take me a little bit to you know do they're not going to be giant i might have like one that's going to be a little sizable but then the other two will be a little bit smaller but they're all going to be samplers and i'm don't quote me on this but i'm i'm wanting to do one of my reproduction samplers for patreon so we shall see how that goes but anyway oh i forgot to show you guys my my new t-shirt so I had someone say oh my gosh can you please put your logo on a t-shirt so we can buy it so I did that and I ordered one for myself not that I'm going to wear it a whole lot I'll wear it on my videos but <laughs> I love it I think it's super cute and uh, these are so soft this is the Bella canvas t-shirts this is available in my Etsy shop uh, what I like about it is I like the length of the sleeves. I don't like short sleeves right here. I don't. I like this length of sleeve. Um, you can see how, this is an extra large. You can see how long it is on me. So I ordered another shirt with a different design on it. And I got a large. And it fit really nice. It wasn't quite as big as this, it, obviously, because this is an extra large. The large... I liked the fit of that one as well, and I, but I was afraid after I washed it, it would be too small. After I washed it, it's still perfectly fine, and I dried it too. I didn't even hang it to dry. I wanted to see what the shrinkage would be, but it's not bad at all. Might have, you know, just a tinge. It's long, and the sleeves are long. It's super soft. It's that Bella canvas. It's not scratchy or anything like that. So I'm really pleased find, have, you know, found this company to do this so these are print on demand if you order it it will get printed made especially to your order and then they ship it directly to you I do not have these in stock I do not have them like if you need to return it though you can return it to me that's not a big deal you can't return it to the company that printed it but I can uh, you know if you have to return it for a different size return it to me that's the only way to do that but there's a size chart on there so please 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 measure yourself and then look at the size chart and make sure you order the correct size. So because exchanges are a pain in the tuchus. Let's just be real. So I think that's it guys. Um it's it feels good to have a video done. It really feels good to have a video done. And I am gone this weekend and I'm gone next weekend. Next weekend is our friends weekend that there's like 11 of us. We have been going the first weekend of August. We have been doing this for probably 15 years now. We have rented an Airbnb on the water and it's just a weekend of pure fun and relaxation and everyone brings, everyone's responsible for a meal and it just works out beautifully. And, and these are all friends that I've made from our church because all of our kids went to, you know, Holy Rosary Catholic School. So they all grew up together 
And then that's how we all met and became like super close friends because we all got together so our kids could play. And then we all became best friends. Now our kids are all adults now, <laughs> but we're still getting together and having a good time. So anyways, you guys, I probably won't have a video now again then for two weeks. I mean, today's Tuesday. I suppose the Tuesday... I suppose next Tuesday I might be able to do one. I don't know. It just depends on how much I get done. I don't want to do a video if I don't have a lot of things to show. So it'll probably be two weeks before I actually do another video. But have a great two weeks and enjoy stitching. Enjoy the beautiful summer weather because I know a lot of people have been scorching. I mean, if it's in the 90s and humid here, I can only imagine where it, what it is other places. So I hope you're getting some relief this week like we are. I guess all that's left to say is don't forget, create every day. Bye.